and welcome to the soccer show. I would like to kick off the show by introducing the Bunbury Forum Force co head coach, Matthew Locke. Matthew, welcome to the show. Cheers, Danny. Also, to the show, I would like to welcome the uh, Diella Park Rangers goalkeeper, Daniel Eaton. Thank you very much. Glad to have you here, Daniel. We will be discussing today the State League and the South West uh, Premier League. But before that, what I'd like to do is congratulate uh, Matt and the Bomb Reform Force on their win 2 0 away to Armadale on Thank Saturday. You. So uh, tell us, Matt, how did that happen? Uh, just down to hard work, really. We always planned for us to be a betting in period of about six weeks, and six weeks is what it's taken. So, I mean, we've worked hard. We believe in what we're doing. As a coaching team, we know what we're doing. A lot goes on behind the scenes that people won't have a clue about. And uh, we said six games, so it's now starting to come together and we've put the building blocks in place, so to speak. Yeah, again, like you said, you mentioned six games and uh, I'm a bit worried last week when I was looking at the league table, to be quite honest, because after five games, you guys lost four and drew one. So how did you turn that around? How did you get your team to be you know, working together, making sure that when you went to Armadale, you did achieve a, a great result? Um, it wasn't a case of turning things around. It was always a case of just believing what we're doing. Um, and that would be my advice for any coach. If you put something in place, you have to stick with what you're doing. And, and like I said, behind the scenes, at the beginning of the season, we said, look lads, this is going to take five to six games. Because we were trying new stuff, new formations, new personnel. So we knew it was going to come together. Um, Balcata should have been the week, but we switched off for two minutes, um, but we played very well. So look, it was no surprise to me, no surprise to the players. Like I said, a lot goes on behind the scenes. We're stuck together, we're a very strong group, and uh, we just hope we can build on this from now. Fantastic. I know as a, as a team, you all work together, and uh, you all try and, and achieve the goal and the objective that you set before the game, but just to mention, is there any standout performance that you'd like to mention regarding the game on Saturday? Yeah, two people um, especially stood out, and they're at completely different ends of the pitch. We have Ryan Francis, who's um, our forward. He's playing single up front on his own, and it's a tough, tough task. Yeah. Playing up front on your own, as you know, as a, as a coach and stuff, that, I mean, you can be caught off and scrapping for balls that you've got no right to win. Um, but he put in a great shift, and he got his reward done in a goal. And uh, down the other end, Liam Hutchinson, sent half, um, he's only been in the country a couple of weeks. Um, like I said, new player, we've, we've drafted him over especially, and he was outstanding. I mean, if you're looking at someone to teach a kid how to strike a ball, you want to watch this lad, because he can really strike a ball. Now again, you mentioned there that you, uh, you drafted this player from uh, overseas, is that correct? Yep. English player? Yeah, Welsh. So Welsh? I don't think well. I don't <laughs> now again, you know, it's one of the sort of points that we need to discuss too, regarding drafting people from overseas, because how many overseas players do you have now in in, in the team? I'd say the first team is probably a 50-50 split at yeah. present. Um, we are we're very very aware of the local talent and that's something that we want to nurture but we've got to stay in the league. It's as simple as that. We have to stay in the league and if it means we have to go shopping abroad, we'll go shopping abroad. That's why I've got contacts. That's why I speak to people around the world. So um, look, we, we're desperate to make sure that we're nurturing local talent and that's proof in the pudding with us setting up an academy. But also, if we need to get these better players over, then so be it. I mean, if I get a relegation on my CV, I'm not going to get employed next year. So I need to just ensure that we're staying in that league. Whether and look, I don't care where the players come from. I just want the best players on playing on Saturday. Without a doubt. And you just mentioned academy, did I? Just quickly, how does somebody become involved in the academy? What do they need to do to be part of that? Well, I mean, I've been holding trials. Um, I set up three weeks worth of trials. There's going to be some more trials happening soon. We're dealing with the logistics behind the scenes. But also, look, I, I don't just coach on a Tuesday and Thursday and then play on a Saturday. I live and breathe this game and I'm travelling around. I'm watching the kids play. I'm watching the Bumby Foreign Force Juniors. I'm watching Daly Allen Park Rangers Juniors. I'm watching every Sunday match that you could think of or anyone that I can get to. So, look, I'm, I'm integrated into the local community in the football sense, so, or in a soccer sense, sorry. So that's something that I'm doing and I'm constantly got my eyes open and my ear to the ground. Fantastic. Now, just a quick one again, because a lot of people out there are discussing this. It's a bit quite a sore subject, as we would say, about bomb reform force players playing on a Saturday, but then being available to play on a Sunday for the local teams in the Southwest Premier League. What's the deal there? Look, I, I think if we're looking at it in, in detail, there's only one player that has played in the starting 11 for Bumby Foreign Force and then gone and played on a Sunday, and that's Mark Osmond. Uh, Ozzy is leaving the country in a week's time, so there was no way on earth that I was going to stand there 
and say, no, Ozzy, you're not allowed to play football. He's here to enjoy his time in Australia. He's worked very hard. He's coming up to the end of his second year. Mm. Apart from that, we deal with things on a case by case. Um, I look, look, an example with regards to Dan's team. Nathan Tosum is playing in our reserves. He's very close to the first team. We need him to get as much football as possible. So that's why he's playing on a, on a Saturday and then turning up and playing on a Sunday. But it's case by case. I'm trying to communicate with all the managers. I've got great relationships with, um, with the managers in the local area. I've obviously got a great relationship with you, Tony Adamo. Yeah. So uh, more communication needs to happen. But if people need to know anything, give me a call. Fantastic. Numbers available. Numbers available. Excellent. On uh, that note, um, Matt, um, if how does someone like myself or um, anyone else in the South West Premier League um, get noticed and make the um, state league team? Mate, uh, look, a lot of people ask that, and as you know, I mean, you've seen me around on Sundays. I, I go and watch as many games as I can. Um, for a good example, so far this season, I went up and watched Bunbury United v. Hay Park and look I'm not there just to have a beer with a few mates and watch the game I'm there to see the local talent um, and there was a couple of players that stood out that, that game one of them being one of our under 18 players Cam Mara who plays yeah. for Bumby United so straight away went up to him after the game Cam you're training with the first team next week so look I, that's what I do that's part and parcel of my job like I said it's 24-7 I'm living and breathing this and I, like I said I want the local players to, to make that step up if I can fool the whole team of local players that are going to compete and win this league, then so be it. I mean, there's not, there's no divide. There's no English side. There's no Australian side. There's no yeah. New Zealand side. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's, it's a community side. And look, like I said, I'm always watching. Yeah. Fantastic. And just in close for the Brown Reform Force, there. What is your actually your goal and objective this season? Um, look, we, it's progression. I know that might sound a bit wishy-washy, but look, last year we finished um, three points off the bottom, and we finished third from bottom. If we finish fourth from bottom, that's progression. It's a step up. It's a step up. <laughs> As you know, it's all yeah, about progression. All the time. So that's what we're looking to do. Finish with more points than we did last year. Yeah. And, um, and just basically be a better unit as well. And also, off the field, try and get some more supporters down as well, which yeah. is something we're working incredibly hard behind the scenes to do and reaching out and discussing with people all the way. Fantastic. That's excellent. And uh, talking about uh, yourself, Daniel, I think that was a fantastic question that you asked because there is a lot of talent out there in the South West yeah. and it's great to know that you guys from Bomb Reform Force are out there to, to make sure that you spot it yeah. and then if, if they are good enough to invite them maybe to come and train for you guys and see hopefully they can become a, a state league player. Definitely. Now with yourself Dan, again congratulations because yourself and Bomber United are on top of the league with uh, seven points and the only two teams that have not lost the game so yeah. far this, uh, this year. Uh, how did you do that? Um, just Real good effort from the boys at training and, um, you know, just believing in ourselves. Um, Kev, our uh, gaffer, he's, he's really instilled belief, especially into the young guys. Um, they're a year older now. They're um, maturing up a bit better now. They're getting a bit stronger in challenges, um, st stronger holding off players. And, um, yeah, just real belief. And also um, having Nathan Tossum and um, Paul from the um, Bunbury Forum Force um, Reserves team, they're, they're um, making the players around them, you know, play the way that football should be played. Um, so, yeah, that's that's it really. And yourself being a goalkeeper, only three goals this year. Well done. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm proud of it, but you know, I've got to keep going. It's it's not a it's it not stages. a stages. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon, isn't it? No, so. no, without a doubt. And again, Matt, actually, I'm going to bring yourself in because you mentioned that you go out there on the Sunday and watch the games. And talking of, of games and results, a couple of results that did stand out after three games was, to be quite honest, Dynamo's getting beaten 7-0 mm. at Austria Land, and I was at that game, and to be honest, it could have been 7-0 at the, at the first half. So, uh, and then talking of this weekend games, and which is quite surprising, the uh, Premier League winners from last year, Hay Park, went down to Dunsborough and lost 5-2. And not only that, they are bottom of the league with only one point, so yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Well look, I can certainly relate to being bottom of the league with only one point, which was, which was our case only last week. So I think Hay Park will come strong. I think they've got a, a good manager in Gareth Johnson yeah. and he's got his head screwed on, he knows the game, he's qualified and, and he's been there and done it at this level. So I think they'll come strong. Just with regard to Australind, look, they had two very good players that were training with us pre-season, Shane and Brett, centre midfielder and the striker. And, 
look, perhaps playing a bit below their standard. I would have liked Shane to have stayed with the Air Force for a little bit longer, but he's going to score a, a truckload of goals, I think. Oh, they, they were very impressive against uh, Dynamo. was absolutely fantastic. They did an amazing performance, so they'll definitely be one of the teams to watch out in, in the league. And again, talking about Dunsborough, uh, Daniel, I think your next game is against Dunsborough. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, be a tough game, but we can't um, focus too much on their result last week. We only have to focus on how we've been going um, throughout our first three games. And uh, talking again about the first three games, you know, if you look at all the teams in the league, who do you think is going to be the biggest threat to you guys maybe going out there and winning the league? I'm looking at the table, you know, people would say it's between us and Bunbury United, but, but to me, I think uh, Australind are the main th um, rivals for the league. Um, they'll be up there. What about sure. APY? You don't think you like Matt? You don't think that they're going to be a threat? No, I think they've got to change teams. It's rebuilding for them at the moment, but they will come good. They won't finish bottom, that's for sure. Um, so they'll be, they'll be up there? Mm, below Dale up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've heard it. Gareth. <laughs> I'll send you a text later on, mate. <laughs> you've heard it first on the soccer show that uh, Hay Park will not be winning the league this year. <laughs> You've got to watch out for that game, Daniel, I'm afraid you might be eating your own words. <laughs> now, eating off your own words, uh, we're going to talk about your future fixture like, coming up this Saturday. What's, uh, what's in, in place for you guys? Uh, we've got Sterling away um, in the Cup, so, I mean, it's just a chance for us to build on what we've already done. Um, we're going to be working incredibly hard this week. Um, my message after the game on Saturday in the change room was, look, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's one result, and you can't get too excited with the wins, and you can't get too down when you lose. You just have to kind of keep a medium. So that's the message you're going to be sending to the boys this week. Um, it's just going to be hard work again. Look, you can't, you can't just turn it on and off like a tap. So yeah. we're going to turn up, we're going to build on what we did last week, and hopefully go one better. Oh, without a doubt, like I said, you know, I'm talking to a few players on Sunday, especially, and to the supporters that come and watch the Sunday League. And everybody's always asking about the bomb for and force and how they perform on the side. And I know the better you guys you do, and there'll be more supporters coming and watching those games. So, man, thank you for coming in today. And wish you all the best for Saturday. And again, we'll definitely be coming to watch your home league games. Like I know that you'll be coming watching our home league games around the southwest. Daniel, again, big job this uh, this Sunday against Dunsbury. Like I said, you know, five two against Hay Park. That was a massive result. And I'll be honest with you, it, it did send a bit of shockwaves around. The, 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 the league like it did with Foster League against uh, Dynamos but good luck thanks okay. for coming in and to the rest guys uh, until next time eat sleep and most importantly have fun playing football goodbye <laughs>